back to our series on Bible Nuggets. I'm Chris Hammond, joined by Andy Blaylock. Good to see you. Good to Today be here. Today we're going to talk about the higher calling of grace. Amen. Yes. Our theme verse for the entire series, as most of you probably know by now, is Matthew 4.4, where 4. he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Yeah. And for our scripture today, we don't have to go very far. In fact, if you just flip the page to Matthew <laughs> yeah, right. 5, that's where we find ourselves today. That's right. So easy. But today, yes, as Mr. Hammond said, we're going to be in Matthew chapter 5, just one page over. We're going to read eight examples in this Sermon of the Mount. Many people have heard that phrase, the Sermon of the Mount passage, where Jesus compares the Old Testament law with New Testament grace. That's mm-hmm. important. We want everyone to see that grace is a much higher calling than the law. And after we see this, we're going to end by reading a verse in Matthew chapter 5 that I think a few people, many people even, have trouble with. I think they do, yes. Now, whenever Jesus refers to the law here in this passage in Matthew 5, he's going to say things like, you have heard that it hath been said by them of old time. Yes. Or or, you have heard that it hath been said, or or something Mm -hmm. similar to that. In each case... He's referring back to the Old Testament law. Mm-hmm. We want everyone to see how in each and every instance, yes. the calling of grace is higher Amen. than the calling of the law. Let's, let's begin in verse 21 if we can. Yes, verse 21 says, Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not kill. And whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother Raka shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say thou fool shall be in danger of hellfire. Right. Moving down to verse 27, it says, Mm -hmm. Ye have heard that it hath been said by them of old time, Mm -hmm. thou shalt not commit adultery. We know that's the law. That's right in the Ten Commandments. Yep. But I say unto you. Yeah that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. Moving on to verse 31, it has been said, whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorcement. But I say unto you that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, causeth her to commit adultery, and whosoever shall marry her that is divorced committeth adultery. Down just another verse to verse 33, it says, Again, Mm -hmm. ye have heard that it hath been said by them of old time, Thou shalt not forswear thyself, but shalt perform unto the Lord thine oaths. But I say unto you, Swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool. Amen neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Neither shalt thou swear by thy head, because thou canst not make one hair white or black. Yeah, and down to verse 38, a familiar passage to many people. You've heard this before. Ye have heard that it has been said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you that ye resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, Turn to him the other also. Right. One more verse, verse 40. And if a man shall sue thee at the law Mm -hmm. and take away thy coat, that was the law, let him have thy cloak also. That's grace. That's grace. And verse 41, whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. Verse 43, you have heard that it hath been said, Mm -hmm. thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Hmm. love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them Hmm. which despitefully use you and persecute you. Now, please note, in in a case, in in really each case, the requirements here of grace are higher, sometimes much, much higher. Yes. Yes. Than the requirements of the law. So if mm-hmm. men struggled for centuries <laughs> to keep the law, how are they ever going to keep grace? It's a great question. And that brings us to the verse we mentioned at the beginning that many people have a hard time with. They have a hard time understanding, and that is in Matthew chapter 5, 
and verse 20. And now this is the Lord Jesus speaking. He says, For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. How can our righteousness, Brother Hammond, exceed the righteousness of those who strive to keep the law? Well, beloved, here's the answer. You and I, we cannot keep grace. No, no. You cannot fulfill the requirements of grace. Mm Mm-mm. And this is why Jesus came. Yeah. So he could fulfill the requirements of grace. Yes. He could grant you his righteousness. Yeah. If you do not possess the righteousness of Christ, then you will in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. However, you can possess his righteousness. Yes. By faith. By grace through faith in the finished work of Calvary. Amen. And that is why we call it, we thanks be to God for this unspeakable gift, something that we do not deserve, his record and his righteousness that we could never earn or attain to is on our account. Applied to our account. It's amazing. It really is. And we hope that in this series like this is a blessing to you. Give thanks to God for all the wonderful things he provides. We hope that you have a wonderful day and we'll see you next time.